Hey everybody, it's Joel Williams and Chase L. will be coming to you today with our video number nine in our series of 52 weeks of personal injury. Today we want to talk to you about the seven biggest mistakes that we see our clients make or potential clients make after an injury. So what's number one? Uh, number one definitely is either not going or waiting too long to get treatment when you're injured. That's easily the number one thing. I always tell people if you're hurt, you have to go to the doctor. You've got to get treatment. You've got to get someone to check you out. So much easier, more effective when you're presenting your case or claim to the insurance company or the jury to say, I'm hurt. And oh, by the way, here are all the medical doctors I've treated with, uh, than to say, oh, I'm hurt and have no records or anything to show for it. So that is easily number one. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And, uh, you know, I, I think the most common one we see is people just waiting too long. Sure. Um, and I get it. You know, you're hurt. Um, it's not a catastrophic injury. You might want to just go home, take some ibuprofen, and sleep it off. Um, but if you sleep it off for a week right. or multiple weeks before you go to the doctor, you can run into some problems. So if you think you're hurt, at least go to your primary care physician or urgent care to get checked out. And um, then if you continue to have pain, get in to see a specialist or somebody that can address that specific area of your body. Right, and the, the, the goal is always to avoid any unnecessary gaps in treatment because exactly. it just gives the insurance company something to gripe about and poke holes in and say, well, yeah, you know, you may have been hurt in this terrible wreck, but you waited four weeks to go to the doctor or you went to the doctor, then there's a six, you know, six week gap. Yeah. Maybe you, something happened between that time frame that we're not responsible for. So it's always important to get to the doctor if you're hurt and be consistent uh, with whatever the treatment plan is for the doctor. So, and of course, I mean, there's ways to combat it, right? Gaps in treatment, that doesn't mean, you know, a gap in pain, but it just, you know, if you stay consistent and things like that, you're not going to get a lot of kickback. So, yep. All right. So number two, I would say is not taking pictures at the scene of the injury. So if it's a car wreck, uh, we've all got cell phones nowadays. Uh, you want to get out if you're able uh, and take pictures of the property damage, take pictures of the scene. Heck, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be opposed to taking video um, of, the, of the scene, of the weather conditions, anything like that. Uh, if it's a slip and fall and you find the substance that you fell in, certainly take pictures of that. Uh, but just documenting that evidence can be crucial to winning your case uh, later on and there's really no good reason not to do it when the video and photograph uh, capabilities of our phone are right there at our fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and especially when we get a call about a wreck or something that's happened you know, the day before or within a week or however long, we'll try to go out there as quickly as we can to you know, take pictures and things like that. But it's so much more effective and you're preserving evidence a lot better if you can just do it right there on the scene um, and not have you know, any issues. And also to kind of take, just take it a step further if there's any witnesses that are there. Because a lot of times, a car wreck for instance, there might be two or three witnesses that are hanging around that you've actually spoken with and you just assume the police officer is going to take that person's information and put it in the police report and that you'll get it later. Don't ever assume that because a lot of times that doesn't happen. So yeah. I was I was a personal witness to that. That's exactly right. I was sitting at a red light, saw somebody blow the red light, T bone somebody ill, turn them pretty bad. I called the police, the police came to the scene, it was flooding rain, I waited, I waited, um, waiting for the police officer to take my information. Finally, I went to the police officer and I'm like, hey, would you like my information in case somebody needs a witness later on? He's like, oh, you just go write it on a sheet of paper and, and right. give it to me. So I did, and I'm, I never heard anything else about it. Right. But I can basically guarantee you that my name did not end up as a witness in that police report. Sure, right. So, and you have to remember, too, police officers, if it's a clear liability wreck, they don't see any. There's no real benefit for the, from the criminal perspective to include that you know, that information. So I always tell folks, if you have a witness or know of a witness, get their information, text them, that way we have it. Yeah, because what the police officer thinks is a clear liability wreck does not mean that the insurance company is going to think that's a clear liability wreck. Exactly. So exactly. what you got for number three? So number three is trying to handle a case without a lawyer. Um, there are some cases, quite candidly, that you don't really need a lawyer, but at a minimum you should talk to one to find out whether or not you need one. And there are certain cases where you do need a lawyer and some people will say, you know what, I don't want to mess with getting a lawyer. I think it's just easier. I can handle it myself. I've got Google. I've got the internet. I've seen Joel and Chase's videos. I feel like I can handle it. Please don't do that. I mean, that there's so many ways you can go wrong and mess up a case um, that it's just, you always want to at least talk to a lawyer. Yeah, at least talk to one and find out whether you need a lawyer. Um, and if nothing else, you can maybe get a little free education out of the process because right. when you 
when you schedule a consultation with most personal injury lawyers, at least in the state of Georgia, it's going to be free. Um, at least the initial consultation, so no harm, no foul. So just do it, get in touch with a lawyer. Um, all right, so number four, I would say. In that same vein. Yeah. Right. Fail, failing to research the lawyer. Um, i.e. calling the lawyer that's standing on top of a semi-trailer on a commercial or holding a check on a billboard or something like that. Um, listen, that guy, that lady, is not the lawyer that will be handling your case. Most of the time, the lawyer's face that's on TV or the billboard hadn't stepped foot in a courtroom in many, many years. Uh, very rare exceptions to that. Um, what I always suggest that people do is get online, research, look at a lawyer's website, look at a lawyer's social media. Um, try to figure out what kind of person this lawyer and this law firm is. And if you like what you're seeing, schedule a in-person consultation. And it's probably best to schedule an in-person in consultation with more than one firm. Uh, when you're scheduling those consultations, if one lawyer seems to really be putting the pressure on you to hire them, that might be a, maybe if not a red flag, it's a yellow flag. All right, something to consider. Caution, right? right. Be careful here. Um, and then go with your gut, but just do the research. This is, a, if you are in need of getting a lawyer, presumably something pretty bad has happened to you and you are in need of their assistance and you're going to be you should be able to put a lot of trust uh, in this lawyer so make sure that the person you hire is uh, trustworthy and competent to handle whatever the issue uh, that you're facing is. yeah and that's what i was going to say is competency is important right lawyers are kind of like doctors they specialize in certain fields mm -hmm. um, you don't want to go to a bankruptcy lawyer for a car wreck case um, all we do are injury cases all we do is personal injury and wrongful death that's our specialty right if you came to me with you know needing to create a will or something like that I wouldn't know what to do, right? So it's very important that you research the right lawyer that's right for your case. All right, so the next one is what? Um, let's go with giving a recorded statement to an insurance company. Yeah, recorded statements, well, there's, there's two parts to that, right? If it's your own insurance company, typically give the recorded statement. Most of the time you have to give a recorded statement. But if it's the at-fault insurance company that's calling you, trying to be your buddy, hey Joel, we're so sorry you're in a wreck. Do you mind if I take a recorded statement? Tell me what happened. Tell me about your injuries. Do not do that. At least don't, do, at a minimum, don't do that without talking to a lawyer first because you're not required to give that insurance company a recorded statement. You don't have to do their job for them. So be very wary. I've had horror stories of cases where my clients have spoken with the insurance company thinking that the insurance company is doing them a solid by saying, hey, we'll give you a couple thousand dollars now and we'll pay your medical bills later. Little do they know that whole case is settled and they've settled it for a fraction of what the full value of the case is worth because they try to settle it within a week or two after the wreck occurred. And there's no way you can know the full value of a case a week or two after the wreck has occurred, especially if you're treating. Because you could be treating for a whole other year and have all these medical bills, but you've settled the case because you gave a recorded statement. Yeah, I was going to say, worst case scenario, you settle the case um, and then you still owe bills after that. Right, exactly. So that kind of transitioned into number six, number, the number six mistake. Right. Um, and that is signing anything with an insurance company without having it reviewed by a lawyer. Um, <clears throat> Let me tell you, they don't give you a piece of paper to sign to help them out. Correct. <laughs> they, they are asking you to sign something that is most likely uh, either going to harm your case or put an end to your case. So do not sign anything that an insurance company sends you after a personal injury without having it reviewed by a lawyer first. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, classic examples of a release, right? Mm -hmm. you, get, you might get a check in the mail or something and ask you to sign a release. Well, you might be signing a release that will foreclose you from making any claim whatsoever to any other insurance company and to be you know, pretty, pretty detrimental to your case. So, yep. All right, last but not least, was waiting too long to either file the lawsuit or make a claim. I mean, I don't know how many times we've had this happen where a potential clients called us up weeks before the statute of limitations for any particular claim, and it's 
you know, there's nothing we can do at that point because we don't have enough time to investigate, enough time to get the case filed, enough time to get the defendant served. So you just don't want to wait. Kind of like you don't want to wait too long to get treatment. You don't want to wait too long to talk to a lawyer to see whether or not you actually have a case or a claim. Yeah. And, and I'll take it a step further. Um, if it's a car wreck case or a slip and fall, chances are we could probably put it together really fast if we had to. Mm-hmm. Um, but that makes me nervous too because I don't really like to do a rush job when it comes to lawsuits. Um, but if you've got a professional negligence case, like a med mal case or something like that, like two or three weeks isn't going to cut it. Yeah, that's just not like you're going to need to give the lawyer at least five to six months to be able to gather all of the records that he or she needs to review. Um, they're going to have to have it reviewed by an independent expert in the field of practice of whatever professional you're needing to sue is. Uh, and then get that report back, and then they're going to have to draft the lawsuit, and they're going to have to attach an affidavit, and all of these things. So if it's a professional malpractice case, it is exceedingly important to get in touch with a lawyer as quickly as possible. Right. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. That was seven, right? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, that's the seven biggest mistakes that we've seen our clients or potential clients make after a personal injury. Uh, we hope this video has been helpful to you. If so, we would appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Uh, giving us a thumbs up in the uh, like section down there or giving some comments of mistakes that you may have seen other people make uh, and that you hope that they can avoid in the future. It may be helpful to other people watching this video. It may be helpful to us. We may pick up on a tip that we can pass along to our clients. So we'd appreciate any comments that you may have. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next week for video number 10.